Generic greetings and welcome to Science and Sanity, a channel dedicated to bringing my rapidly deteriorating sanity in the form of badly written and edited videos to you. The last week or so has been a nightmare as a number of things go on in real life, primarily which is getting ready to move out and back to school, so yikes, stressed out, and that's made the video quality and presentation take a nosedive off a cliff into the pits of grub-infested hell. Too long, too verbose, not silly enough, the channel was made to share my love of sci-fi and it's silly and stupid and not at all serious. So instead of getting explainy and exposition-y, I give up. Today we're talking about giant stonking lasers in space, and I'm going to be as meme-filled, stupid, stuffed, and excited as I want to be. Before we get into the video proper, however, if you'd like to support Psy directly, check out our Patreon, and if space shekels are short, consider liking, subbing, commenting, all of that good stuff, since every little bit helps, and I want to get to 40k so I can have a topical excuse to talk about THE silly universe. Psy also has a Discord. Come on in, hang out, share hobbies, and generally enjoy a community of like-minded turbo nerds. Anyways, all of that linked in the description, onto the video. Lasers. Giant lasers. Giant stupid lasers some smooth brain decided to dump into orbit. Are they for planetary defense? <laughs> no! They're exclusively for broiling people alive on the surface with the power of a thousand suns. Orbital lasers are an absolute staple of sci-fi, the same way you find grain or rice or diabetes as core parts of the diet in many regions around the world. Orbital laser platforms are so common that they fill pretty much every role you could need, from side piece to center stage to dessert or a simple accent to the main course. And that's because they are one of the most nebulous weapon systems out there. Not in how they work or their esoteric energy sources or how they create their destructive force, oh no. It's just a laser pointer. A really big one, or a few million strapped together and aimed at one point, but a laser pointer nonetheless. So it really shouldn't be that hard to make consistent, realistic versions of them. That, however, is never done. Instead, an orbital laser isn't even a laser 90% of the time. It's a weird, nebulous mix of energy, particles, fantasy, and reality all jumbled up into Schrodinger's meme beam. This might make some people mad, but for all intents and purposes in sci-fi, things like Demand and Dominate's Ion Cannon, Cogs of Conflict's Hammer of Dawn, and War Star's Death Star are all functionally the same. It's a giant glowing beam that kills things whenever it hits them. It's a giant laser. Sure, Command and Conquers does the damage after the laser fires, and it's called an ion cannon, but come on, it's literally just multiple beams from space. It's a space laser. The Hammer of Dawn does the damage as the laser is fired and seems to love turning things to ash statues rather than actually vaporizing them like a laser should, and the Death Star seems to kerblam things in the split millisecond that the front of the beam touches them, so... You know, pretty chaotic in what they do, but for the most part they're all the same. They are giant beams of death coming from the heavens, and I didn't even realize until I got to this point in the script, but I conveniently chose a wonderful RGB as my example. Woo. Colors. So honestly, the Technobabble distinctions are entirely pointless, since none of them adhere to reality, giga-powerful orbital laser weapons are essentially sci-fi magic. If it fires out a giant glowing beam at something, it's an orbital laser platform, and we can just leave the definition at that. Also, they are often quite literally just sci-fi magic. I cast the killing curse! Nyeh! Yeah. <laughs> that, that was so stupid. Now, there are so many people out there that have made all of these videos, from essays to think pieces to game dev talks about the tropes of orbital lasers, how they're implemented, how they're used, this, that, and the other. And honestly, the most poignant one I have ever seen was from one Jacob Geller, the internet's resident overthinker, making such riveting topics as deep sea scary or cold is cold. This is a joke, I love him. Watch all of his stuff. It's the perfect blend of grossly verbose and pointlessly over-detailed to spend an afternoon enjoying. But there was a video he made on the conceptual failures of lasers in space. And while I feel like he's mostly correct, I feel like a huge part of why they're so cool and why they're used is often completely overlooked as people just delve into the nitty gritty and the deep lore of all these different settings without, you know, seeing the forest for the trees, as it were. And that very, very simple reason of why do they exist is because Deep down, everyone has a little bit of a sadistic child in them that gets off on the power of God in their hand as they boil ants alive with a magnifying glass outside, or something. 
At least I assume everyone does, because otherwise I'm even less normal than normal. But this is my opinion, where people get their enjoyment from and, and what conjures the face-splitting smiles that people have while playing around with them, or why people just generally go, yes, I'll take your entire stock whenever someone mentions putting these in a setting. Like I mentioned earlier, the Cogs of Conflict series has several moments where they confront you with the moral, ethical, and environmental consequences of using the Hammer of Dawn. An amazing name, by the way, Chef's Kiss. But I really don't care about all of those moral and ethical conundrums. It is unceasingly amazing when you get it and watch as all your enemies turn to vapor and dreams in front of you. Giant grub units like the Brumach or the Corpse are simply melting under the weight of eye-scorching light. Even the giant city turned to ash in the later game was, in all honesty, kinda unengaging. Maybe I'm just channeling my inner Goofy here, but it, if this was the result of using the Hammer of Dawn, I would use it again. Probably not even to shoot it at the grubs. Private Sir, what in the hell are you doing with the Hammer of Dawn controls? I'm drawing dicks on the moon? <laughs> Go ahead, dumbass. Court martial me. You can't censor the moon, idiot. Honestly, that's, that's where the fun comes from. They are such a stupid weapon, conceptually. I agree with Mr. Geller and all of these other people, like, they, they would never be able to work in real life. They are such indiscriminately, uncontrollably stupid weapons, even in their respective universes. They're just, they're so overblown and pointlessly powerful, or just generally not useful. Like, the Death Star just, it exists to blow up one planet, and it took two of them to make that happen, and then it gets destroyed. It's such a hilarious waste of time and resources, but just... They're, they're perfect. They're so perfect for everything that sci-fi is. And if we were to take a step back and, and really look at it, like, realistically, a big laser in space would just be a laser, vaporize some small area like current real-life industrial lasers do, and then superheat everything around that, maybe to the point of setting stuff on fire if it's flammable from the waste heat, and then that's pretty much it. But there is just... There's just something about having God's laser pointer. It's just so intoxicating and so much fun to see show up. From the other side of the equation, when they're being fired at you or you need to run away from them because you've lost control once again, the Cogs of Conflict series, when you're firing it, you know, ant and child reverse roles, if you will. It's still hilariously fantastic. The scenes where you see Chief from Halo running from the glassing beam, or again, watching the Hammer of Dawn go absolutely out of control and fry your allies nearby, it creates some of the most ass-clenching oh god oh shit oh fuck oh no feelings in the world as you watch the beam slowly sweep towards its target and you're like, oh, mistakes have in fact been made. When it comes down to how you can actually use them as well, they are some of the greatest plot fodder imaginable. You could spend so much time and effort and energy and probably money designing and writing all these complicated weapons and tools and ships or just solve all your problems with lasers. It's easier and more fun that way. Need to mine something on a planet? Giant beam firing down from the heavens. How does this mine? How does it work? How is it not just vaporizing a line across the planet? Who knows? Who cares? It works. It just does. This is the hod towered of laser weapons. Need some orbit to ground anti-tank weapons? Lasers! Does it matter that they would probably incinerate everything around the target as well? Are you stupid? That's probably the point, idiot. Who cares if you just vaporized some old, historic monument? There was bad guys in it, and now there aren't. Want an energy transfer system to get power from the sun to the center of a planet? Lasers get it done with style. Need a final doomsday weapon or some plot-significant super weapon? Lasers. It's always lasers. Hey, Phil Swift here with Flex Laser. It can carve your enemies up and all life on the planet, tactically barbecue your dinner, and it even works underwater. Flex laser is so strong and durable, it would be easier to tell you what it can't do. And to demonstrate, I cut this ship in half. <laughs> Orbital lasers are just a classic of science fiction. They are so hilariously silly and so hilariously stupid. I love them. 
and I think the best part is that everyone treats them with a straight face like it's an inside joke. Most of the stuff you see is either debunking them or critiquing them or going over them in a meta sense when you look at stuff online, and in-universe, they're always treated so seriously, like this is just perfectly normal. Like, yeah, we built a laser that glows like the sun from the side, that's not energy inefficient at all, don't question it, don't worry about it, it's perfectly fine. Enjoy them. Have fun with them. Love them. There's no reason to take them seriously, so kick back and use your orbital death ray as a speed tanning tool or universe's greatest graffiti brush. And honestly, just go nuts with it, who cares? And that pretty much concludes the video. I needed a palate cleanser and something short, sweet, and funny to reset myself from all the stress and frustration. And with that, a hearty thanks to all of Psy's patrons, sticking with me through the stupid, and a special thanks to the $5 tier patrons. David G, the original, Augie, Eleven Bravo Crunchy, Terry Higgins, Pedro Munoz, David G, the other one, Silencer, Vox Apollyon, Phoenix, BT Legend, Electro Boy Eleven, Logan Maynard, Mickey, David Armand, Cree Dome, Robin Stapit, Fenrir Striker, Tachi Tukane, He's Deb, Pixie, Virtus, Fabric 445, Anchovy Bob, Mini Crustacean, and Charles. Thank you very much for your support. I hope it'll continue in the future. Outros are hard. Hope you enjoyed the video. Goodbye.